that's uh, phenomenal that Harris cuts a deal, gets through this, gets through the, all the way through the House, headed to the Senate. Then we find out somebody else is buying them, and Ronnie Johns acts like he didn't know nothing about it. Now we find out he did know about it, Senator John. Yeah. Moon, I got to tell you, I want to make at least two points. The first is that Mr. Yeager, Joe Yeager, who actually started out as a plumber and now owns a number of hotels in New Orleans, has probably been the most vocal critic of this whole Harris thing because he. one of the things is he thinks it ought to be let out for competitive bidding. And that's the first thing. And he also has pointed out that if you don't let it out for competitive bidding and this company, this Vegas company, comes in with an option to purchase Harris without a bid, it it just looks terrible. And it increases the value of that of Harris because they know they can't leave. Moon, So it it increases it to about the value of a billion dollars, whereas without this this option this to, to continue the lease that this. Caesar's Palace, the, the, this group will allow Caesar's Palace to run these casinos, but without it, it, it to say you and to say they didn't know. I mean, if if they didn't know Moon, it's embarrassing because this is a huge thing. Well, hold up though, hold up though, yeah. Ronnie. I'm just reading what the the article said that Ronnie John said basically uh, he they approved it last October. He acted like he didn't know anything about it, but apparently he did know about it. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you know, you, you try to give people the benefit of the doubt. A bunch of them said they did not tend to believe the other ones. Even John Alario said that he didn't know about it. But several others said we did not know about this. To me, Moon, this changes the whole debate. To me, this makes us really take a look at this thing and say we didn't even know the whole story. It's a huge benefit to Caesars through this VC. BICI company that owns the option for the next five years, and how did we not know about it? You know, and, we, you know again, we need Moon, to do. You know, we need to do. Ahead. We need to do an investigation to find out exactly who knew what. I, I need to know that because there's. No, let me tell you something. Every time this is the problem with our state. It's a big problem with gambling too, but it's a problem with our state. We we don't do anything up front. We don't do anything up front to let people know what's going on. Uh, we hide things. One of the reasons I'm against the Constitution Convention, I don't think they're going to tell us anything up front. And that's why, and I'm not trying to put them both together, but I'm showing in our mentality statewide, we don't tell people up front. We can't be honest up front. And gambling's never honest up front. And this is proving it again. Well, I'll tell you this, Moon, and those are, those are two, they're related topics, and I totally understand your suspicion of how our state legislature does business. I do think, see, Moon, if, if what I've read is correct and they do allow people from each state Senate district, three people, to be legislators, up in, uh, up in Shreveport, I would run to myself personally sure. to be one of the legislators and so one of the, the delegates to this constitutional convention. And I promise you, again, I, I would shoot totally straight, and I think others would too, but putting that aside. But you know what, but I'm saying in general, I'm saying in general, okay, but let's go back to what we were talking about originally, and I apologize for getting off. I'm just proving, a, making a point with the Constitutional Convention. The gambling's not up front. I think we ought to do investigation on who knew what and when, because if these legislators, Ronnie John's the big, big author, I mean, you got the Speaker of the House was the big author on this thing. If they knew Way back then, this was happening. This, this, this is not good. This is not good. And I'll tell you what else, Moon. You're exactly right. And Moon, but for the fact that the Securities and Exchange Commission required Harris and Caesars to file this, we wouldn't even – the public would not even know this today. It's only because someone went and looked at the SEC filings of Caesars slash VC, this company that owns the option. We wouldn't even know without this moon, but uh, anything else aside, a lot of problems get, and you know this, and I know you agree with this, a lot of problems get fixed when you allow competition. That's what this Joe Yeager in New Orleans, the man who started out as a plumber, now he's very owns a ton of hotels very well, but he said, why not open the no-bid contest to bids? Open, we're doing it for 30 years. Why not open it to bids? Why does Harris keep having a no-bid contract? But it's what you say, Moon. We, we don't have transparency, so you're right. You know, I, I, that's what frustrates me. We got good people in this state. 
We're just not very bright politically, and we start. Bl- and then the business people get so entrenched. They get so entrenched in government and money, and they all of a sudden they they the pillars of your community, and they're out there saying, "Hey, we need this," but they don't tell you what's going on behind the scene. I just want some up. Why can't we be up front with anything in this state? Nothing. We do nothing I, I, up front. I, 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 and Moon, you were actually on the air at this point when gambling first came to Louisiana. Because I, I remember when you first got on the air. I sure was. You were, and and, and I remember. Oh my gosh! It was going to cure all the, and you do too, all the problems with funding in the state. We weren't going to have any more health care funding problems, education funding problems. We were going to put money in the in the foundations, and gambling was going to cure all of it. We haven't had nearly any of that. And by the way, Moon, they're saying in that article you commented on earlier in the Times pick, it said 500 new jobs will be created. But Moon, in the legislation itself, that House bill. There's no, there, there's no requirement in that in the law in what will be the law for there to be more 500 more people employed. So I think somebody's just throwing 500 new employees out there. You know, I, there's no way it, there's no basis in the legislation the that way, I've seen. By the way, let me for, give you, I give you I give you a big example going back to the lottery days when we voted on the lottery. And anybody oh, yeah, listen to this program and tell me different, I'll be glad to listen. But everybody thought that money went to education, and it never did. And so every, the perception out there was it's going to education, and, and they took advantage of it and passed it. I don't – look, you won't play the lottery. I could care less. But then what happened was everybody found out they wasn't going to the lottery. And lawmakers wanted to quit – and this is what we do. They wanted to quit hearing people say, well, the money's not going to education like y'all promised. So years later – to make, get people off of their rear end, I don't know, it's probably 10, 12 years later, they came back and said, okay, we're now going to put an amendment that all the lottery money goes to education. And we passed it, okay? And all the lottery money right. does go to education, $159 million, But they took the, mo- the money from the backside. It never increased the, the education budget, budget. It went in, and then they took another $100 million out the other side. So, look, that's what we do. So the deception is that we got a hundred million increase and we didn't, but lawmakers could say, "Hey, we 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 it's going to the it's going to education now." So they didn't have to listen to that anymore. Everything's deception. And, Nothing's up front. It is, Moon. And what people don't realize, what if our state and 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 there are some good ones, Moon. We got to be honest. We, uh, we see I said some bad they were. Ones. They're not all of them. But that's right. And my point is, it always ends up being. Worse, it's like saying I don't have time to do the job right the first time, but I always have time to go back and redo it. Here, if they just would stay up front, we but 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 the, but the selling just to get it over the top. We need more money, and then that comment by which state senator was it that said, you know, are you going to go save all of them from gambling? That's that's you know that was a a pretty strong comment to say, yeah. There is a there is a major human cost, and I know people will say, "Well, they have free will; they don't have to do that." I understand that, but you still can't build an economy, a state economy, on gambling. It's got to be on other things. We talked about the other day, Moon, like oil and gas, small business, manufacturing, agriculture. Anyway, that's all I wanted to tell you, Moon. All right, appreciate the call. We got a roll. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. We'll take some calls after. We got to take a break. Had even got the beam. Trump not going to the uh, correspondence dinner. Smart guy, smarter than most of them. Anyway, we'll take a break and be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hi, y'all. All. Welcome, Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program, your opportunity to be a voice. That is, uh, call facts. We go. Let's go to Brett. Brett, how you doing? Good, sir. How are you? Doing fine, sir. I simply wanted to say that the con- the Constitutional Convention should be geared towards having the people vote to approve all taxes. The two-thirds uh, majority should be left in place. Now, I have been attempting to persuade my friend Stephen Gunn, who was state representative 92 to 96 in District 22, to run this in the next election. And By the way, he would be a good one. He was he was he was good when he was down there. 
Oh, well, he's very conservative. We think alike, and I certainly hope that I'm able to persuade him, and I'm volunteering my camper and truck, et cetera, to ease the campaigning stress during the hot summer months. <laughs> so you're wanting them to, uh, to run for a Senate or the House again? Is that what you want him to run for? Run for the House. Yeah, yeah. I'd be interested to see if he would want to do that Barry again. Brown. Who would he run well, against? I, I think he will because I'm uh, I'm a persuasive individual. We're very close friends, and he, he recognizes the fact that we have an embarrassment representing District 22 at this point in time, Mr. Terry Brown. So, yeah, Brown's voting I'm record. Certainly helps all that he would. I think he can run against Terry Brown's voting record and make hay with it. I promise you. But uh, well, yeah, I if, think it will be a, it'll be an avalanche, not a landslide. I yeah. assure you. That. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you get him to run. I know you're talking about. It. He's called in many times, and I remember when he was in the legislature. He's a fine one. Thank you, sir, and God bless. All right, man. Thank you. Eight four four seven six six. 6607 Hickson has a hot. I'm just going back on the, the Harris deal. Uh, why don't they just do a little bit more investigation? Let's find out who knew what. Looks like Bronny Johns knew something. You know, let's find out everybody involved in Harris. Why is it being pushed so much? You heard Royal talk about that. I mean, this is this is what I was trying to say before I even got into Harris. Is is when you look at this. And you see, why can't there be any honesty in anything up front? And I'll stay. I, I just don't understand that. You know, I just don't. I mean, are we that stupid? I said we. Are we that stupid that we just let elected officials and people just tell us stuff and we just buy it, no matter what they say? I don't care if you like the gamble or not. It's not what I'm talking about. Some of you people don't care about this because you don't gamble. You don't go there, so you don't care. Some gamble, some like to. That's fine. I'm just, we, we just don't, we, everything has to be controversial here. We can't do anything up front. I think our people deserve better. I think it deserves, we deserve a lot better. You know, a lot better, a lot more. And yet, same old stuff. Do something, and we find out later that it's not what we thought it was. It's been like that for a while here, I know, but it doesn't have to stay that way. All right. Brandon, do you get a chance to find that thing on Trump? It was with the Fox News. Media hands Trump big, embarrassing win. Correspondence dinner. I mean, how ugly. You want to watch the left unhinged? There it is. You know, no morals, no values, don't care what they say. Uh, Michelle Wolf is a, a total idiot. You know, they don't care what they, they make jokes about abortion. You kill a baby, they make a joke. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah uh, Huckabee. Is first, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Well, she's the first class, though. Right, right. I, I just like the Huckabee name because I know that's, I don't know who that is, but she, she's first class. <laughs> and let me ask you a question. What if this lady would have got up and talked about Hillary like that? What do you think would have happened? What if Hillary was the president? They were talking like this. I mean, they can say anything they want to about anybody that's Christian or conservative or that handles themselves well. And, folks, these people don't have a heart. It's like they don't even have a conscience anymore. See, Donald Trump, and I've been wanting to say, Donald Trump don't, didn't go to this. Donald Trump wouldn't go into it. He's not been to it yet. But when Trump tweets, and I run into people all the time, well, I wish he had quit. Donald Trump's defending Donald Trump because nobody else will. Donald Trump fights back because nobody else will. And he gets negative media 100% of the time. I'm glad he's fighting back. We need somebody to fight for the people. This deep state thing is Obama's masterpiece. This is Obama's deal. And Obama has done it with the deep state. Anyway, here's a quick clip 
from Fox, and we'll play as much as we can, Brian, before we have to take a break. When comedian Michelle Wolf turned in a crude and cursing performance that not only trashed the president, but such aides as Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who's sitting right there on the dais, and Kellyanne Conway. If a tree falls in the woods, how do we get Kellyanne under that tree? <laughs> I'm not suggesting she gets hurt, just stuck. Joining us now, Ed Henry, Fox's chief national correspondent and a past president of the White House Correspondents Association. We were both there at the dinner. Yeah. I've never seen a performance like that. Uh, she was not only nasty, but she was dropping F-bombs on live television carried by yeah. CNN and MSNBC. What's your take as someone who's well, gone through this process? Even worse, she was joking about abortion. I won't even repeat the jokes. They were so vile. Uh, bottom line is, I understand Margaret Taleb uh, as president. I respect her. It's a tough job. You're up there. Uh, you pick the comedian. And there is a First Amendment in this country, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're going to say, First Amendment protects stupid and vile things as well. Uh, however, uh, I think it's long past time, uh, here we are, uh, you know, hours later, for the association to put out a simple one-sentence statement say, we do not agree with this. Uh, these personal vile attacks on Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who is a good person, uh, dare I say that if Hillary Clinton had been elected and Jennifer Paul Mary were up there and got all these personal attacks yeah. about your appearance, and I won't even add and right, I don't even want to play it. It's ridiculous. I don't right? even want to play it. And so the, the association should apologize, period, stop. Okay, I agree with you on that. You know who else agrees with you is um, Andrew Mitchell, who just tweeted apology is owed to press sec, uh, Sarah Sanders, and others. We gross, invited her in. Grossly this, insulted by, by Michelle Wolf. Uh, comedian was the worst since I was insulted. Clinton. We invited her yeah. to dinner. We should have treated her with respect. I don't need to say anything beyond that. Treat right. her and with it respect. It can't sustain on the whole event. I mean, whatever nice things They were talking about there. the First Amendment and yeah. valuable things. By the way, and I'm hearing this on social media, I am not letting the president off the hook. When he said the press is the enemy of the American people months and months ago, uh, that was not right. He shouldn't have said that. You might disagree with individual stories to tar the entire media, including me, including you, that we're the enemy of the American people. Yeah. I'm not letting him off the hook about that. Right. But we should show respect to the president. We should show respect to the press secretary. I shouldn't even have to say that. That's elementary. And people right now are not doing that. And she is a press secretary. She's well, a yeah. professional woman. Yeah. She puts herself out there. Attack her for her, what she says about Syria. Attack her on substance. Yeah. Do not attack her personal. Right. Career. And I give comedians a wide berth, but this was just so far beyond yeah. the pale. And by the way, Michelle Wolf not apologizing. She just went on. Yeah, she'll make She's not going to apologize. She's crazy. And these people in the press are crazy. And I agree with Trump. The press is the enemy of the people. They've become the enemy of the conservative Christian people and American citizens and America and the Constitution. They are the enemy. And that's why they go after us so much. All right, we got to take a break. More to come on the Moon Graffon Show right after this. Hi, right, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844 766 6607. Hickson has it hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program, it's your opportunity to be a voice on the Hickson has it hotline. Uh, just going back a little bit, Donald Trump never went to this dinner, he never should. Uh, comedians used to be funny at that. There's nothing wrong with, with a corresponding dinner where people had fun, the media had fun, it showed that we can all get along and laugh and get along together, but here comes Trump, and the nastiness and the hate just spews out of these people's mouths. You know, these are the people who used to run the country, the F-bombers, the Obama Knights. These are the people. These are the people, oh, it was civilized back. No, it wasn't. They loved Obama. He was the worst president by far that we ever had. They were, I don't know if they could ever be one that bad. Uh, hated this country. I mean, destroyed our health care system. Just about destroyed the economy. Ran up more debt than President George Washington and George Bush. I can go on and on. Just horrendous. They wouldn't dare do what they did to this president and the, and the, uh, the president's spokesperson at all. It used to be. There's nothing wrong with comedy. I love comedy on presidents. I don't care if I like the presidents or not. I tell you, when they, when Bush and Gore was tied, and they had to break the, uh, they had to break the tie. And the Supreme Court in Florida was ruling for the leftists, and the, the the United States Supreme Court was ruling for the law. And Bush ended up winning. They had fifty nine days. Saturday Night Live was kicking their butt. Bush Bush and Gore co presidency. It was hilarious. Will Ferrell was playing Bush. I mean, you couldn't help but to laugh at that. 
When Bill Clinton came along, they did some funny stuff. I know I have no problem doing funny stuff. There's a lot of funny things you can say about Trump. And some people do. But these people are ridiculous. So when Trump is, I used to think, boy, I wish he had quit tweeting. I, I don't anymore because nobody else is defending him. Nobody in the, the Republicans are not defending him. The swamp is never going to defend him. They hate him. They want this country ruined in my book. As far as this comment about the press, saying that the, basically how the press is an enemy of the people in the United States of America. The press is becoming the enemy of freedom, the enemy of independence, the enemy of our Constitution, the enemy against Christians, white males. They have become the enemy. That is a true statement. They are becoming more enemy every single day. I see it right here in, in Louisiana. You know, they love Bill Edwards and Jay Darn, so everybody else, get the heck out the way. But in nationally, the meet and national press corps, I mean, these people, they just love having this country in turmoil. They love it. Doesn't have to be like that. And it's so frustrating. But Donald Trump is right by not going to that. Why would you go to something where somebody's going to hate on you? That's a, folks, there's a big difference. It's not a fine line. It's a big difference. Big difference between having fun and hating somebody. Look, I got roasted before, and this wasn't even supposed to be a roast. This is supposed to be a fun, good time from the media. They can't help themselves. They just can't. I've been roasted before from people I know that don't like me, elected officials. But most, uh, there was one, there was one dying duck, but I don't mention his name. But there were almost, for the most part, funny, hilarious, made fun of me. I laughed at myself. It was in good humor. Troy boy, Troy pretty boy. But you know what, Brandon? I need to put that back on the. I tell you what I'll do. Now I think I, I do have a post today. I'll try to put it up tomorrow. Tomorrow with pretty boy A Bear, Troy A Bear, put on a show. But so do some other people. John Sutherland, Kathleen Blanco, Joy Durrell, me 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 show. They were all there. I'm missing some people. Carol Ross. Carol Ross took shots at me. All in fun. That, that's, that was you know, a roast or having fun. It's a big difference between absolute, I mean, joking about killing babies and abortion. Nothing funny about killing babies. Nothing funny about killing a baby. You know, and these people, they've been getting away with it for long. You look at the left on stage, they're nutting up everywhere right now. And they're going to nut up. They want some kind of socialist utopia. Just tell them to show it. Tell them to show us. Is it Spain? Is it, is it Venezuela, Cuba? What, what socialist utopia are we going to be like? There's none. These places, are, I mean, some of these places are just, I mean, God, I wouldn't treat a dog the way they treat people. That's what people want in this country. They really believe government's going to come in and give them something and they're going to all be great again. Everybody's going to be happy again. Obama did so, mo- so much harm to race relations. I mean, I'm going on and on with him. They never touched it because they're not the friends of the American people. They're not. They never will be. They're not going to be. They're unhinged. And this is a perfect example. So Donald Trump made the right decision not going. It's amazing. Trump does something. Everybody freaks out and we find out it's the right thing. A lot. He's doing this a lot. All right. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. David in Lafayette. How you doing, David? Doing well, Moon. Yeah, on this uh, roast, supposedly a roast. And well, it really wasn't. Co- well, hold up. It really uh, wasn't considered a roast. It was a correspondence thing where they do a lot of humor, a lot of funny stuff. Yeah, well, I found very little of it funny. But uh, if, if you would think deeper into the, this, these weeds, these are the same people who are hollering and screaming about uh, we're the haters, we're the bulliers, and here they stand and and uh, denigrate us for having morals and and uh, a legitimate uh, right to to be. You know, I I don't uh, feel that it's my right to infringe on someone else's rights, but they stomping on our rights. You know, how can they tell uh, children today, don't bully, don't hate others, 
when they're doing it 10 times more than we ever have. Well, it, it, listen, they, what they do is whatever they're doing, they project on us. You know, they hate. They project it on us. They hate all the time. Right. It's, project, it's projected we're haters. If you say, well, I believe marriage is one man and one woman, you're a hater. You hate gays? No, I don't. This is my belief. I have a right to believe that. I believe killing a baby's abortion is just flat out wrong. You just don't kill babies and laugh about it. They don't. So they, they hate us. You know, they, they go on and on with, with the things they hate. They don't like people that are successful. They don't like people that go out and become successful people. They don't like anything about freedom and the Constitution. They don't like free speech. They can say what they want, but we can't. All the things that they project is hate. The left, I'm telling you, the left is crazy, and we've seen them all over the world. What they've done to families and countries, they've earned them. And it's it's my controlling the narrative. Yep, no doubt about it. Great point. Great point. All right, appreciate the call. Day, you too, bud. Thank you. I think it's a great point, controlling the narrative. Yes. Free speech to them is going to be, here's what we can say, here's what we can't say. As long as you stay over here with us, you're fine. You say, like just like saying, I won't be able to say one day a marriage is between a man and a woman, even though it is. God's eyes is never going to change. You know, killing of a baby is not right. Selling body parts is not right. Larry and Colfax. Larry, how you doing? Doing fine, Moon. I want, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for what you do. But I want to make a statement, then I want to make a comment. If that was supposed to be a comedy woman... Fat meat ain't greasy and grits ain't grocers. <laughs> and the, and the only, it was not a true man there. A man, if it was a true man, he would have got up and stopped that. Right. And the only woman with dignity and grace and real woman was Miss Sanders. Mm -hmm. And she, she smiled and took it like a lady. And, uh, yes, sir. And, but, Just a true southern lady. Yeah. Well, this is what they do. You can be. Can you imagine Hillary being the president? They have this, and they just go all over Hillary, all over Hillary, laughing, making fun of her. They wouldn't do it. They would definitely didn't do it on Barack Obama. They made some fun with him, but they would never go after him. Uh, it, it was pitiful. It's beyond the pale, and I, uh, I just pray God to reach down and keep touching us. And make it make all this work out for us. It's gonna work out exactly. They, like it's, it's gonna work out exactly like it's supposed to be. They more of us to the knees than they can imagine, and the tighter we get to Donald Trump. Yep. All right. Appreciate the call. Got to go. You've been listening to the Moon Graffon Show with. Hi, hello. Welcome back, Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. Eight four four. 766-6607, Hickson has a hotline. If you'd like to be part of the program. All right, let's go to Bill and Cachata. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, Moon. You're doing great as usual. Thank you. I just got through talking to Senator Kennedy's uh, receptionist and, and proposed a source of money for the wall that the president wants to build. We talked about this about a month ago, and I finally got through to Senator Kennedy's office. And so we hope that he will be presented with a proposal. The proposal, if you remember, was that we put a 10 percent surcharge on all the money that is sent south of the border by the 11 million people that are up here illegally. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way we could pay for the wall within five years yes sir well and uh i think it's a i think it's a good idea because the people that cause the problem would be paying for the wall mm -hmm. well I, I listen we need a wall we need a wall to be built i don't care how we pay for it uh we need i mean <laughs> this this, Ill, this illegal immigration thing has gotten wide out, by the hand once again barack obama for eight years designed it and rolled them through, and uh, we'll pay a price for it. We'll pay a price for it. Well, uh, the, the 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 statistics on the people in the federal pen, uh, thirty percent of them are are illegals, 
and uh, when they get out, they they uh, are are to be sent back south of the border. But uh, right now, if Mexico decided to take a census, 15 percent of their people up here in the U.S. And uh, I think it's just uh, 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 terrible that our country is being treated like this. Well, we, and it's strictly but, for votes. But let me tell you something. When you elect a person that's not qualified, who has a political agenda, who care less about your Constitution, law, or Barack Obama, that's what happens. That's what happens. And look, there may be somebody come along worse than him. And it will be on the left, and they'll just think you can just do all the stuff we're doing, and you can't. So anyway, I appreciate the call, Bill. Uh, There was an article in Washington Times, MS-13 member gain U.S. immigration system by claiming they are underage. We used to say this was happening when Barack was letting them in. MS-13 is paying smugglers to coach gang members on how to game the U.S. immigration, teaching underage members to claim UAC status and telling those over 18 to lie and claim they're underage to try to gain quick access, easy access to U.S. government officials. Peter King, Representative King, a Republican from New York, said his district is is such a hotbed of MS-13 activity that authorities are right now digging for bodies within a mile of my house. He said some families are forced to facilitate gang members' arrivals and are pressured by gangs to become sponsors and claim the children when they arrive. The Homeland Security Secretary has confirmed the pipeline. This all started under Barack and St. Obama. They recruit young children. They train them how to smuggle across our border, how to to join up with gang members in the United States. Government has detailed such cases from uh, from this month to Arizona. They grabbed somebody 18. He claimed he was underage, and they started telling him how the system works. All started under Barack Obama. It's never vetted. If they would have vetted Obama 10% of what they've done for Trump, first of all, he'd never been president. Just 10% of who he hung out with, people that didn't like this country. It's unbelievable. All right, let's go to phone lines. Go to Buck on the road. Buck, how you doing? Good, Moon. Hey, um, there's uh, just a report that uh, some of these people that made it to that wall once they climbed it, uh, were singing the Honduran national anthem. And I'm not sure how you can claim that you were, uh, you know, fear of your life and you're coming from a war-torn area to get this special treatment. And then the first thing you do when you get to the border of the United States is start praising the, you know, the... I got news for you. I got news for you. There's a lot of people here in this country... When, they, when they're out there doing all these rallies with the Democrat Party, holding up Mexican banners, Mexico banners and things of that nature, holding them up. Yes. And I'm sitting there going, if you want to come here and assimilate, then you do it legally. It's not that hard. You do it illegally. That's- it takes a little while. If you do that, then you want to be an American citizen and become American. If you don't want to become a real American citizen, this is not a place for you. You need to go carry your butt That's somewhere else. That that's a sentiment that I hold. I welcome anybody here that wants to be Absolutely. an American, and they want to do it the right way. But if if you want to just be, uh, heck, you know, from another country, living in the United States underneath your own laws, that's that's not what that's not what immigration was meant for. So, but I just find that kind of ironic that they make it all the way over here, fleeing from a country that they feared their lives in, and and then they uh, want to sing the, that country's national anthem. So. Yep. Uh, you're right, Dixon. That means they just come in here for a freebie. They're not coming here to be yep. a citizen because they'll come in here to be a citizen. They would denounce the crap hole they just left. And trust me, it's a crap hole. We've got to take a break. Well, Thanks for the call. All right. All right. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Remind me to tell you another story. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh. Oh, y'all all welcome back. Moon Graffon. Great to have you with us. <laughs> I can't help it, Brad. And I get these elected officials. I got a lot of stories on them. It's, it's, it's hilarious to watch them. By the way, uh, they commissioned Euro- Europeans commissioned a poll over in a, uh, migrant integration, which is basically illegals and legals coming in. Back over there, Brandon, let everybody in. 
Sweden says 73% say it's unsuccessful. Letting all these people come in. The country's going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, majority of people in France and Germany now says bad mistake we made. 55% in growing every year across the open border block. Said in integration, it, it is going badly, very badly. In Sweden, 73% say it's going badly. And this is exactly what the President Obama did to this country. And then they showed up all the polls in all these countries, the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, Luxembourg. I'm talking about 70, 80, 90 percent of the people said it's a bad idea. Worst thing we could ever do. Worst thing we did. Germany, 63 percent said this is very unsuccessful. France, 64 percent. The Brits, 55%. So what we're doing, folks, if you bring in, this, there's something else to remember what Obama did. When you bring in people who don't love this country, who are not coming over here to live in this country, to become citizens in the United States of America, to accept our culture, the way we live, if they come over here, eventually they're going to turn our culture around. <clears throat> So where we're not going to know the culture we live in and the, and the great culture we've had for all these years. We've had our head ups, headaches and mistakes, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But one day these people turn the country into something it never was intended. I think we're seeing that now. You take people out of these socialist, Marxist, communist countries and put them over here. Yes, you got some that come that are good citizens and want to come over here and do right. But you got a lot of them, they're coming from a culture that has nothing to do with our culture. And even though they leave in a hellhole and a crapshoot, they come over here and don't understand how great it is over here compared to what they live in. And so they never adjust. They never learn to adjust. Some of them do. The ones that want to come over here legally understand the hellhole they're leading to go to a country where they're free to be the best they can be. There's a difference. There's a big difference. What the Democrats want, they want people to come over. They don't care if they agree with the culture or not. Can you register to vote when you vote Democrat? You got people that live in this country. If the, if the, if the Democrats give them a free cell phone. By the way, this is black and white, green and yellow. It doesn't matter. Give them a cell phone. Give them food. Give them housing. You know, give them this. Give them that. You know, you you think that the government is everything and a god, and it's not a god. It's never going to be a god. So it it is what it is. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. By the way, a week from today, uh, New Orleans will have a chance to to get away from the Landrew people. Because Mitch Landrew, who made it on his daddy and his sister's name, (laughs) you can laugh all you want, Brad. That's how he made it. Mr. Empty Suit himself will be gone as the mayor of New Orleans. Now he's going to run for president. That's why he wrote a hate book on racism. That's why he took away, took down statues. He did everything he could, once again, to use blacks. They use blacks in New Orleans. They're wealthy. They can live anywhere they want to live. They can take any vacation they want to take. They can go anywhere they want to. All the people that voted for them can't leave New Orleans. <clears throat> He'd run New Orleans into the ground economically. Crime-wise, it's just unbelievable down there. He's ruined it. Poor, still poor. Uneducated or still uneducated. He's done nothing to change the culture in New Orleans to change anything that's going on, the killings, the rapes, all the stuff that goes on in the cities, nothing. And yet, they're trying to decide his legacy, his legacy. How about a six-inch rain last summer that flooded parts of New Orleans because he never fixed the pumps? He has no legacy of, a, of any accomplishments in New Orleans except he, he, he may have single-handedly ruined it. He ruined people out of there. And this is going to be the Democrats' nominee for president 
He will never even get close to winning the state of Louisiana. He has nowhere to go. He has nothing to run for except president. Hope a Democrat gets in office and he maybe can get a job with with the next uh, presidential person. That's that's all his only hope. He destroyed New Orleans. He leaves next May. Uh, he leaves leaves next Monday. And I think the people they ought to be celebrating. They ought to be celebrating his departure. They ought to be so happy they can't see straight. Except for an 18-month gap in the late 70s, at least one of the four Landrews have held elected office in Louisiana over the past, you ready, 58 years. They don't know nothing else. They know how to use black votes. They know how to use people. It's the end of a political dynasty. Trust me, there'll be a little young Landrew come along and say, well, my daddy, he made it, or my mama made it. I want to go do it, too. Just mention the name Landrew. People ought to be glad that name's going to be gone from here. Mary ran us into the ground. Mitch was worse. Mary was pretty bad. President of the United States, Mitch Landrew. I tell you what, we, there's no way we can fall that low. I just don't think we can. He could not win in the state of Louisiana. He would not get over 35% of the vote. President of the United States, God forbid. Let's go to David in North Louisiana. David, how you doing? Moon, thank you for teaching us those statistics from Europe. The Europeans, I think, are seeing uh, a problem that our founding fathers saw about freedom of religion. Yeah, but it's too late for them. They it's can't okay. do they can't do nothing about it now. Yeah, but you know, the founding fathers wanted everybody to be able to come to America so they could be here long enough to be taught the truth of the Bible and be shown the truth of Jesus. So the founding fathers didn't have any problem with followers of of Islam or Hindus or Buddhists. Come on. We're going to show you what a good country's like and uh, yep. teach you the Bible. Yep, and then you had you had a great constitution. You had you find out what freedom's all about. Is you know everything based off of that. But that's not what's happening now. Obama and them sneaking people in, telling them how to lie to get in. I think you're right in your analysis that Obama will go down as the worst president in America. Well, I American think I, I think I, I don't know if he'll go down. I'm telling you, he is. You got a lot of young people. They're gonna write nice things about him, how he did this and did that. But he hurt this country. He hurt it in so many ways. Oh yeah, it's not even funny. Oh yes, he did. Yeah. All right, got to run. Thanks for the call. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. One more segment to go. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Hello, welcome back, Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven. Hickson has a hotline. Brandon's been playing a little bit of what the uh, uh, quote comedian was saying at the correspondence. And, and, you know, Brandon, you can sit, like you said, you can always have a little funny in something. She's overboard on everything, everything, everything. Wasn't that funny? Her Okay, the worst part about it, besides all the vulgarity, was her jo- joking about President Trump not being rich as a new way to insult him. Yeah. She listed all the insults that have been thrown at him and then said, well, why don't we just try calling him not that wealthy and not rich? Like, maybe you're rich in Idaho, but not in New York. It's just, it was the, it was awful. It was an awful line of jokes but that weren't see, even funny. But you see why he doesn't go. Mm-hmm. Do you blame him? No. If it was in fun, Obama could sit there because they know the jokes would be funny. They'd be in fun. But... Why would he go there? These these people in the press, the media, and Hollywood have just just gone over backwards. I, I've never seen this. I'll be honest with you. I've seen a lot of presidents. I've seen them be ugly. I thought I thought that George Bush W was not a great president by any means at all. Okay, he did some things I just wouldn't have done. But the press beat on him like a yard dog, and I always said, "Wow, can a guy be that bad?" This guy, President Trump. This has been relentless nastiness and hatefulness like I've never seen in my life, 
ever seen anything like this. And it never stops. It never stops. And this is who these people are, though. They are the ones that hate. And they got hate. They got a passion for hate like I've never seen. Most leftists do. They, they don't want freedom of speech. They want freedom of speech to be on their terms. They do. They don't want freedom of speech. They don't want guns. They don't want anything to do with the Constitution. They want everybody to look the same, wear the same clothes, live in the same size house. Everybody gets the same. You know, they got countries like that. And guess what their people are, Brandon? They're all the same. They're all poor. They're all uneducated. They all can't get out of the way, and they can't do anything without government helping them or telling them what to do. So if you want to all be somewhere, ain't going to all be middle class. There's going to be very rich people and very poor people. Because that's what happens when you live in a utopia, government utopia, where we tell you what to do, what you can say, how to vote, who to listen to. You can go to Mexico, Venezuela, Cuba, any Muslim country, any of them. China probably is like that more than people think they are. Russia. What country then, folks? Europe is becoming like that. It's they're it's closer to it than we are. What you can say, what you can't say, what you can do, what you can't do. Bible, Christ, out. We tell you what to do is in. Example, Brandon. It's the Todd Storms piece. School district forbids parents from opting kids out of the LGBT lesson. Not making this up. Parents in Orange, California, may not opt their children out of lessons related to gender identity and sexual orientation. According to a memorandum written by the school district's general counsel, parents who disagree with instructional material related to gender, gender identity, gender expression, and sexual orientation may not excuse their children from this instruction. A school district spokesman confirmed a that the memorandum sent out was authentic. However, parents are free to advise their children if they disagree, and some or all of the information presented in an instructional program and express their views on these subjects to their children. Comprehensive legal review of California's Healthy Youth Act. This requires school districts to provide students with comprehensive sexual health education. The law mandates that school teach about gender, gender expression, gender identity, and a home of negative gender stereotypes. So if you're against that, you want to challenge that, you're out. You're the bad person. You're the bad person. If you don't believe the way they believe, they're going to make you be the bad person. So if somebody comes along and says, oh, marriage between a man and a woman. Oh, my Lord. What a nut. What a psycho babble. Must be reading the Bible. This is the left. When Democrats, when people vote Democrat, this is what they're voting for. They're voting for total triumph. And that's a shame. Now, I don't know if y'all saw this or not. Donald Trump apparently pulled feds out of K-12 through education. Wednesday, April 26th, President Trump, I didn't see this. Y'all may have. Signed executive order Wednesday to start pulling the federal government out of K-12 through education following through on a campaign promise to return school control to state and local officials. The order dubbed the Education Federalism Executive Order will launch a 300-day review of Obama-era regulations and guidance for school districts and direct education secretary, Ms. Betsy DeVos, to modify or repeal measures she deems an overreach by the federal government. Too long the government has imposed its will on the states and local governments. Well, one of the reasons they'll continue to do it is money. As you know, local and state governments just broke. They just overspend and they just they can't get any more money. The citizens in some areas are starting to rebuke that. So when the federal government says, here's a million dollars, and then they say, but by the way, this is what you got to do to get this million dollars. And so local governments that are really suppressed don't have the money. They say, give me the money, we'll do the regulation, but we need the money. The result has been education that spends more and achieves far, far, far less, Mr. Trump said. My administration has been working on reverse this federal power grab and get power back for the families and cities and states, get power back to localities. The previous administration, which, by the way, is Obama administration, uh, 
had increasingly forced schools to comply with whims and dictates from Washington, but his administration would break the trend. Folks, that would be really big if the feds have nothing to do with local education anymore. It would be really big. Now, you know, here in the United, in the state of Louisiana, we have education reform about every three years or so, three to five years, we do something different. Hadn't worked yet, but we do something different. We tell people we can get more money. We take money from the federal government. Or we try to tax our way to uh, tax our way to prosperity. By the way, in Chicago, municipalities are issuing IDs now, which, by the way, is an invitation to voter fraud. Illegals. 183,000 or 7% of the population. And they're doing IDs and invitation. They want people to come get their IDs. And it will eventually lead to voter, voter fraud, just like California, where they're handing out driver's license now, will eventually lead to voter fraud. And that's what the left wants. People voting in this country who are not citizens. That's sad. Really, really sad. But Democrats don't care. Just as long as they can win. By the way, and I didn't get to it. Jim Bean did it again. Deputy press secretary for Bell Edwards. Another article. Another one, another one, another one. GOP officials pushing envelope. Republican. This is the first paragraph. Republican conservatives who control the Louisiana House and the leaders of their state party have made no secret of the fact they don't like Governor Edwards. The GOP and its well-funded party members are directing their money and resources to try to defeat Edwards when he runs again in 2019. Well, let me ask you a question, Mr. Beam. What do you think the Republicans ought to do? You don't think they ought to try to defeat him? That's stupid to even print something like that. Of course they're going to decide, want to beat him. He's a liberal Democrat. You ever notice how Jim Beam wants you to take him serious as a reporter, as a writer, as an editorial writer? Yet every article backs the governor. He never challenges the governor on anything. He never says anything negative about the governor. Ever. None. By the way, now because of Jeff Landry and Treasurer Schroeder and Blake Miguez the other day at the Bond Commission was trying to protect us from some banks who are now have policies against the Second Amendment right, Jim, Jim Beam comes to the rescue of Bell Edwards. By the way, Jim, why don't you get Bell Edwards' comments on all the legislation that's being run through the House and the Senate right now dealing with gun control? Because if he's such a Second Amendment rights guy, why didn't he join with Landry and Miguez and Schroeder and say, okay, you companies are going to do business here. Don't tell us how to dictate policy, because one of the things Beam does in the article, he gets on Miguez and Lance Harris and them for telling Edwards what to do. But he allows companies to come tell us how to act and what to do. I don't know when Jim Beam's going to retire, but he can't retire quick enough. I cannot believe they let him write in American press. I really am shocked. He hadn't been right on a subject in 10 years. I don't remember any of them. And now the Bell Edwards and Jay Darden are cohoots. Boy, he loves them. They don't ever do anything wrong. Only the House Republicans. Anyway, we got to take a break. Back tomorrow. Actually, John Schroeder joins us tomorrow, Brandon. That's right. Okay, we'll, we'll visit with him about this tomorrow. All right, we got to take tomorrow a break. Tomorrow at 10? 10 o'clock. All right, see you tomorrow, folks. God bless.